Welcome to Final Fantasy XIV, your first day. The series that proves the game has so much to do and so much to see, so there's a lot wrong with taking the back streets. With a hefty learning of crafting behind us, we can return to the northern front and finish the main story and everything at level 50. That is essentially or explicitly required. Everything within this video, you absolutely must do to continue, or absolutely should interact with due to it being extremely useful. Everything otherwise is optional, and is going to get its own separate video, but be warned that optional does not necessarily mean it's just safe to ignore. I'll be structuring it a bit differently, but we'll get into that when we get to it. Just know that, even if it's technically optional, it's not in this video, you should still check that out for some important stuff too. But for now, let's move back into the main crux of the game and tackle what's needed. Last time we made it to Northern Thanalan and saw the main story quest hit level 50. If you've not hit 50 by this point, go do some of the things discussed previously to get leveled up. But before continuing the story, we have a much more important task at level 50, our level 50 job quest. This one is so extremely important. To start, as usual, we get a skill. Secondly, it gives us a warning. Before we could do any other job quests in future, we must finish A Realm Reborn and reach Heaven's Word. You can hit level 80 and we'll still see no new job quests because we need to reach the expansions. But for now, check your inventory because one of the crest rewards was listed as a box. Open this box for a full set of artifact armor better than the armor you were getting from the previous job quest. Rather than being item level 50, this is a full set of I-90 armor and includes a belt. This will increase your power by a ton. Put it on and watch your average eye level rise by a lot. Sufficiently powered up, we return to the front once again and finally, readying for war, not war, we get Castrum Meridianum. We'll get an active help about item level, which is part of why we needed to get that great armor from our job. To enter Castrum Meridianum, we need an average eye level of 42 or higher. Thanks to my special earring and the Dragoon armor, I am 63 average, drop down a bunch because of the other accessories are weak. This active help also mentions tomestones which we'll get into later. Keep this in mind though, as you queue for Meridianum and see the reward for this dungeon is 200 Allegan Tomestones of Poetics. So get running it. Problem is, this might actually be one of the longer queues you experience. No matter what role you play even. We'll see why in just a moment when we get inside. The first reason is we'll see... This is one of two dungeons in the game that are 8-man. Every dungeon before and every dungeon after, except for the next one, is four players. The second reason for the long queue times is when we try to skip the cutscenes, we can't. At all. You must, every single run, watch every single cutscene for the entire dungeon's run until the final boss dies. There's some very important and good reasoning behind this decision, but we'll ignore that for now. Just know this is entirely intended and they had reasons for it. For two tips for Castrum, in the Livia mech fight, there is no aggro table. The tanks cannot do anything. The first person to draw aggro, and then anyone who shoots her with a cannon afterwards, is the only person she will attack. Stand in the middle of the arena if you have aggro, and let everyone else load the cannons and do the mechanics. If you're a ranged person, attempt to help kill the adds too, but without leaving the middle. 
one dead Livia later, we can finally skip the cutscene because the run is over. And we earned ourselves hundreds of poetics. We'll get an active help informing us the exact position of where to turn in these tombstones. This message shows up the moment you obtain your first tombstone, no matter what the source is. I got my first poetics from doing a treasure map, if you recall. I also showed off the vendors when we first reached Mordona, but always be sure to keep this info in mind. They're in the kiosk up the road. Back outside, we can turn in the quest. Now, I barely mentioned this last time, but this and the previous quest rewarded earrings for each roll of item level 70. As we continue to progress, more quests will be rewarding gear of similar eye levels and some higher eye levels. I believe the levels are first I-70, then I-90, and then finally I-110. I will not be picking any of these up for reasons of this series, but I recommend that for the rest of your time, if you can get an upgrade from the quest rewards, pick up that upgrade. Every little bit of stats adds up, and when you're done with the weaker items, you can sell them to your grand company. But now on to the ultimate weapon. Notice the reward for this quest is a special key for a mount and a Fantasia. This is a very important item for people who love glamour. But for now, back in town we unlock the Praetorium, the finale. Once again, a reward of 200 Poetics, but also we have now unlocked Main Scenario Roulette. There are only two dungeons in this roulette. Meridianum and Praetorium, but the reward is EXP, Gil, and 300 Poetics on top of the 200 from the dungeon, and on top of a new player bonus. This can be extremely worth it to do right now, and is what I am trying. I might get Praetorium, and on top of running it for my main story quest, I'll be running it for the roulette and getting that bonus 300 poetics on top of it. So let's queue for that and hope for the best. Well, sh one roulette later, I am nearly level 52. I was level 51 before I came in here and my EXP bar is almost filled. Main Story Quest Roulette is a huge amount of EXP due to the extreme time requirements. Don't overly stress out if you overlevel. The game won't let you do anything with it, and there are options to make sure you don't go into an expansion overleveled. But okay, now to the Praetorium for real. It's time to take down Gaius. It's time to save the world. Two tips here. One, the first area and the area after the first key door, ignore the enemies. Let the tanks handle it and you just run by because we're not killing these. The EXP isn't worth it, especially since we're already overleveled. Secondly, when the group reaches this certification key reader, everyone needs to use it. Some people just completely forget to even when told to in chat. Make sure you use it, no matter what. If you don't do it, the Magitek armor will not let you progress. Oh, and don't go AFK mid-run, or you might get lost cause this is a bit of a mazy place. But alright, it's time for the final showdown. It's time for... Oops. We beat the game! Congratulations! You've come so far. You've become a hero to the people. The warrior of light. And have become welcome to... A realm reborn. And a realm reborn... Is not over yet.
we may have stopped Gaius. We might be celebrating. We might get ourselves some credits, but a Realm Reborn is only halfway done. One note, you can skip the credits without worry, and I want to also note the Media Survivors portion. These are the people who played 1.0 and figuratively or literally survived the fall of Dalamud, the seventh calamity we see in the intro. Players actually got to play the invasion of Gorlimald, but did not have to experience the fall of Dalamud itself in gameplay. But See the dangers ahead, and return to the Waking Sands once more for congratulations once again, and take careful note of this man here. Remember him. He'll be important later. Then head to Minfilia for our rewards. The first was the Magitek Key. This is the same Magitek armor we've been using in the story, but without the special actions. There's a quest in Mordona to restore these. The other item is a Fantasia, an otherwise premium cash shop item. Using this, then taking off all of your gear aside from your weapon, you can log out and back in to be given the option to entirely change your character's looks. You can change race, gender, everything. You must keep the name though, that is a separate premium charge. I will not be using mine. I'm going to save it for later just in case though. We also get flying. This only applies to A Realm Reborn areas though. All flying outside of A Realm Reborn is its own entirely different thing the game will spell out for you when the time comes. And know that all mounts can fly. But keep progressing and eventually Minfilia will have, in addition to the main story, a side quest, a recurring problem. This is marked as side content, but it's 100% required story content. I recommend doing this as you progress naturally, and I'll be covering the whole thing later in the video when the story eventually forces you to do it. But otherwise, the Siams in the other room will be the ones to have the quests, one at a time starting with Ifrit. After you beat Ifrit, come back here, do Garuda, kill Garuda, come back here, kill Titan. While doing the story quest though, this will be a good opportunity to test your flight capabilities. You may forget you have it given it's brand new, so always remember to jump and fly. It's a lot faster than ground speed, and you will gladly learn to use it every chance you get. Eventually though, the story will finally send us to Mordona. Now is a good time to visit Rowena's House of Splendor and buy yourself some Ironworks gear with all the poetics we've been earning. We had no need before, but now this is a very convenient time. I recommend talking to Elena on the left and getting a weapon first. Then do a chest piece and pants for the best pieces you can get. These items are extremely strong and last you pretty late into the expansion. They're item level 130. You may even consider farming up a full set of gear. But I'll go more into that in the other video. Just buy what you can afford. And when it comes to buying more beyond what you can afford just from following the main story, refer to the next video. For now though, know that this vendor isn't the only vendor. In all three main towns, there's this blue bag icon near each of the Aetherites. These are Splendor's vendors with direct access to all of Rowena's goods in a tidy menu system with a drop down menu. These appeared after we defeated the Ultima weapon. This is an a lot cleaner and a lot more convenient method to access the shop without returning to Moedona every time. Keep moving on and remember you have Vesper Bay tickets for any time you need to return to Vesper Bay. On this trip back, I accidentally talk to the old man in this spot and unlock New Game Plus. 
This is something optional, but it's so easy to unlock, not even needing a quest, I accidentally did it. So when returning to the Waking Sands next, you might as well grab it too. This is a neat solution to redoing the main story or other quest lines without making an alt. But quickly into the story, we'll be seeing one of many trials. As mentioned, all trials from now on will be 8-man, and there's a lot of them to get you into the groove of 8-man trials. They're all very different, even the refights with the original three primals. But be prepared for a lot of boss fights in future. And after completing Mog or Ifrit hard, you will unlock Trials Roulette. But that has a hefty min eye level requirement. Soon after Mog though, the game will lie to you. It will tell you you need to complete the Crystal Tower series to continue. In the top right, I have Legacy of Alag, the first of the Crystal Tower quests. It is incomplete, and yet the next story quest is available, no problem. Now, Crystal Tower is in fact required for the story, but not yet. This is a requirement at the end of A Realm Reborn. So we'll talk about that in a bit, but you may want to start the series now though, much like the primal refights from Minfilia. In this case, Outlandish Man next to Schlafbjorn has the quest you need. But keep pushing forward and you may have noticed all of the quests are giving you very little EXP, 4800 each. But remember, we're already over leveled. I was level 52 before even starting the 7th Astral Era quests, and all of these are level 50 and will continue to be level 50 until Heaven's Word. Don't whine about what is, in reality, really good EXP once it's all added up, especially when you consider roulettes that you can do whenever you want and dungeons that are required, like Snowcloak. When all is said and done, I end up being level 54 by the time I reach Heaven's Word on this character. That is massively overleveled for what is supposed to be starting you at level 50. But soon after Snowcloak, as mentioned, with the quest Let Us Cling Together, you'll then run into the first main story block. You must now finally complete the Primal Hard Mode refights. The main scenario guide will even update to have the next quest in a recurring problem line, which I am up to Titan at this point, the final one. Remember, even though we've moved to the Rising Stones, the quest is all the way back in the Waking Sands. But three primal refights later, we can move on and eventually hit the next dungeon, Keeper of the Lake. If you do not do any optional dungeons up to this point, Unlocking Keeper will open up 50, 60, 70 roulette. As mentioned, Praetorium and Meridianum are in their own roulette. All other level 50, 60, and 70 dungeons are in this roulette. Once we get into later expansions, 80 dungeons will be added to it for sure, when 90 is the cap, and so on. Making another leap ahead, soon after defending the Steps of Faith, we'll see another split in the story. Two sets of story quests must be completed, like in past. You must complete both lines up to their completion, and then upon completing both of these lines, we'll finally hit that hinted at main story quest block requiring the Crystal Tower series. But we're at the very, very end of A Realm Reborn, so if you haven't done them yet, you've been putting it off for quite a while. So, let's actually talk about them now. Let's move on to the Crystal Tower quest and our first series of 24-man quote-unquote raids. These are more a casual content kind of thing, so you don't need to worry about them being raids. Some of them can get challenging, but they're not overly so. 
In the top left, when you get in, you'll see the party list says which alliance of three you are a part of, A, B, or C. The other two alliances are in their own little party windows, so you can keep track of their statuses without being a part of those alliances as well. Few notes, follow the mass of people and make liberal use of the shortcut objects if you die and have to release. Boss arenas are also huge, and sometimes you have to split up the alliance into their individual parties. Usually someone will mark each path with an A, B, or C area marker. Match your alliance letter to the marks placed, and join the rest of your team when split off. And much like main story roulette, trial roulette, 50-60-70 roulette, upon unlocking the second of the 24-man raids, having at least two unlocks alliance roulette. But with that, we're able to progress to the very, very end. When we reach the parting glass, we are about to watch the literal ending of A Realm Reborn. Talking to the lady in waiting, you will be warned to set aside a significant amount of time. At least set aside an hour any time you see this warning. This won't be the last time you get this warning. Make time whenever you can, and make sure it's a good amount of it. And watch as everything goes down. And then prepare. You have now just beaten A Realm Reborn. And welcome... to Heaven's Word. To which I will not be going into. I am level 54, I have three job quests available, level 50, 52, and 54, and the first quest to Heaven's Word open. I can return to this room at any time the same way I got in, but I will not be continuing as Dragoon. I will be talking to this man here in Uldah to become a samurai. But not right now either. That will be saved for next time in the optional quests section. Remember, here we are only covering what is absolutely necessary to continue, but there is just so much more to see and do that we just completely avoided up to this point, and we really should go over it all just because there's plenty of very important stuff, even if it's technically not required anywhere. We'll be back for Heaven's Word later, but A Realm Reborn still calls to us. Thank you for watching this episode of Final Fantasy XIV, your first day. This one might be a bit shorter, but the optional stuff is huge. There's so much damn stuff to go over, and I want to make sure that there's a clear separation between the needed stuff and the optional stuff just because there is so much. This game is far too huge for level caps to just be singular videos. At least for level 50. Perhaps later on I'll do level 60, 70, 80, etc. as their own singular videos without worrying about the distinction, just because we'll have gone over all the different options. But that's also unlikely because the kinds of content that they came up with, with the expansions. Stuff like Eureka and Diadem and all that. But for now, take care and may the power of Anna Nidhogg lay waste to your enemies. And an extra special thanks to all my patrons over on Patreon. And an extra, extra special thanks to... Ethan Olson. Jamie Cotterell, Kathy Nock, and Melfi. If you'd like to become one of my patrons, the link is down in the description. Thanks for watching. <laughs>